A very good evening, everyone. We welcome you for this webinar on S sedentary SI joint self mobilization technique. We are overwhelmed with response. We have already crossed 2,800 registration number, but unfortunately, our Zoom platform allows only to have 1,000. For people who are not able to join us on this Zoom platform room, they can log on to Facebook, like our page on Facebook, and watch it live there. Our page is Society of Indian Physio. If you Google that on Facebook, you will get that page. You can like the page and see that webinar live over there. Meantime, when we prepare to start, kindly go through the disclaimer, which is there on your screen, followed by a few important instructions to make this discussion a great learning experience for all of us. Thank you all of us for joining us today. We will be starting today's webinar shortly. Good evening, everyone. I'm sure all of you are excited to start this journey to learn about sedentary SI joint, self-mobilization technique by the experts themselves. We have Dr. Manish Arora and Dr. Deepak Kumar with us to teach us how do we mobilize the sedentary SI joint. I'm sure these two names are very familiar in the fraternity of physiotherapy needs no introduction. But just before we start our today's webinar, I would like you to go through the disclaimer, what we have right in front of your screen right now. I hope you can read that. Some important points to make this learning experience a memorable one. Thank you all. I, once again, on behalf of members and the governing body of Society of Inman Physiotherapists, welcome you all for today's webinar. Just to inform you about Society of Indian Physiotherapists, there are about 17 of physiotherapists who got together in the year 2015 to fill the vacuum created to have a platform for physiotherapists where they can interact academically, connect with each other, collaborate, and innovate new things in the field of physiotherapy. 
Society of Indian Physiotherapists has been existing since 2015, October, and we have been holding various activities. The major one being the annual conference. Till now, we had five conferences so far. The sixth one is, as of now, scheduled in the month of January 2021 at Chennai. At the end of the program, we'll share the details about that. Today is our initial initiative to start the webinar to utilize the time when we all are locked in at our homes. Using technology, we are going to pick up topics which are of great relevance to the physiotherapist and take up with the speakers who are considered as expert in that particular area. To be before we begin, I wish all of you a very happy Ramadan and congratulations and wishes for Akshya Tithi, which happens to be today. So on this auspicious day, we start our webinar series with our first edition. I'm also glad to share with you the registration response for this webinar has already crossed 2,800. Not only from India, we also have our friends from Nepal, Sri Lanka, Philippines, United States of America, United Kingdom, Denmark, Greece, Middle East, Sudan, Malaysia, and I think few more other countries. I'm not able to name them everywhere, but before we start, we must thank them and welcome them to this platform who have joined us to experience this journey of learning. So I am going to request our panel, first panelist, Dr. Manish Arora, to join us. And before he comes on your screen, let me introduce, although Dr. Manish Arora doesn't, it's, it's a name who doesn't need any introduction, just for the formality. Dr. Manish Arora is currently working as a Dean Student Welfare with SBS University in Dehradun. He has trained more than 20,000 physiotherapists in India and also abroad. He's considered expert in a lot of specialized manual therapy technique, cryo practitioner techniques, and a lot of osteopathic technique. He helps qualification not only from India, but also prestigious institutions from abroad. Over to you, Dr. Manish Arora. Thank you, Dr. Nitesh. Uh, and thank you, Raju sir, Deepak bhai, and all the 17 city members who have given me this golden opportunity to be among so many people today together. I think uh, we are all locked in and it gives a, uh, though it may be a virtual platform, but it gives a great feeling to be clustered with so many people together. And let me start with the little things which I want to share with you in this hours when we are all locked in our homes. And uh, this is something I believe would help you to understand your own problems and to treat you. I've been traveling to many places to teach physios and most of them come with their own back problems first. And this little presentation I hope would uh, not only make them feel a little better after doing these exercises, but also could be used later on once they become an expert in these exercises to help their patients. So this is what I'm intending to do here. It's the self mobilization SI joint techniques that I wanted to share. But before I go to the journey, I want to pray for all of you that you should stay healthy and safe in this, this, this stressful time. And let's have a little look on how physiotherapy has been evolving. It's been evolving very nicely. We have so many techniques, so many things now, which 30 years back when I joined physiotherapy was, wasn't there. But still one thing which troubles me today is we still are in a world of too much of belief rather than unreality. Very much like this picture, if you can see on your screen, this gentleman feels he's clicking the pictures for the right persons, but that's his belief. The reality may be different. And so is with many techniques I learned. I don't say all techniques were wrong. Many of them were wonderful and they've been amazing giving results, but some of them we have been practicing. There's just two examples. I don't want to categorize and say anything, I randomly picked up two from Google Scholar, two articles, and these are meta analyses, which shows that few things which you believed were working were actually more than, not more than a placebo. They produce result because the patient feels better with them. But unfortunately, if you were not have given these techniques, it wouldn't have made any difference. I've picked up these wonderful lines from the book of Robin McKenzie, 
who says that we got a very fair chance of making people better even if my treatment is not precise. Why? Because we have inherited a self-healing mechanism. Statistics shows the problems like low back pain are automatically going to become better in 44% of the patients within one week. And 86% of these patients within one month are going to become better on their own. Now, a question may come to your mind that why then we are listening to this man? Why want to learn manual therapy if people are going to become that much better? What the, what's the, the despair need to learn manual therapy? The need for that comes from this slide. If you look at this, I'll try to use my pen if it works. Uh, you can see this is the initial stress, which is getting the dysfunction popped up. We may have some tightness and we get some distress and gets a little bit more troublesome. But we take a pill, it becomes better. But with subsequent stresses, it starts growing. And we come to a point where the pills and the normal treatment is not working. We see a therapist. If it gives us a normal mode of exercise, which do not actually change our myofascial elasticity, this is what is going to happen back. The things may come back again. And they may come to become more severe in the next time. And it may grow up into a cascade of distress, dysfunction, degeneration, and deformation. But if you see the research shows that the myofascial elements, when corrected initially by the manual therapy, make the patient stay not only better immediately, but in times to come. So that is what we want to impart, health, not just an instant temporary pain relief. To make you understand better, this slide, I put it across. On the right side, on the bottom, you can find one slide when there's a little fire going on. It's a minor strain, a minor pull, which may happen and lead to a little inflammation, which will lead to pain. Then there is trauma, which not only de-aligns the body part, but also gets a lot of uh, alignment shift. And then the myofascial on the top of the screen. All these things would also lead to inflammation and pain. So if we put them under an umbrella cover of only cryotherapy and electrotherapy, all of them will become better. But what happens? The problem number four, it's now been taken care of fully. But if we talk about problem number two or problem number three, we have just corrected the pain, which was our best friend telling us something is wrong, but we got rid of the friend and threw him out of the house. But we have not corrected the basic cause of that. So I think we need to understand and then make it better. For that, you require to understand a little bit of mechanics and a little bit of dysfunction of this mechanics, which you call as pathomechanics. Had there been more time, I would have gone in length and explained to you. Last eight years, I've been trying to dig it into this all thing, how this happens and to what extent it happens. Especially the last six months have been a really uh, big game changer for me. And I was lucky to learn from uh, players like Andrew Wellman, uh, Josephine, Carla, and plenty of other people. And I went to the chiropractic university as well. And when I put it together, you need to first understand the basic mechanics, the dysfunction that can happen, and then the various ways which we can do that. As I said, I would have loved to go ahead, but I'm sure Deepak sir is going to bang me down if I take more than 25 minutes. And his bangings are not grade one in, in physiotherapy, they're always grade four. So just on the lighter note, but let me put this in a very short and informative way across to you. Now to understand the mechanics, let's see how in normal function we require mechanics. If you screen on the screen, when I move, my one leg goes forward and when it goes forward, the ilium compensates by pos moving posteriorly, inferiorly and medially. In the opposite direction, where the leg lags behind, 
the ilium is going anteriorly, superiorly, and laterally. Not only that, the sacrum also changes its position. If I take my right leg forward, the weight has shifted on the left leg. This makes my spine bend on the left side and the sacrum gets fixed underneath it. But remember the right side sacrum was free. So the right side sacrum will definitely like to go anterior, whereas the left side sacrum goes posterior. This is very normal, as is when you bend forward, your sacrum tends to go into nutation and counter nutation. We don't have any problem as long as these bones are healthily moving into this position. The problem comes when this mobility is restricted. It could be restricted by a trauma which has made the joint go out of its alignment, or it could be because of a tight myofascial element. If you see this slide out here, it is very movable, and when I push it in one direction, it goes back in the other direction. Here, intentionally, I put a red rubber band more here. That means I made one side more tighter. Now, if I take it into that direction, you can see it is restricted, and now it gets struck. It doesn't go back. That is what is a fixated joint, which is born out of a myofascial dysfunction slowly over months or years. So, to have a good functional joint, myofascially, the structure should be balanced. But if they're not balanced, the joints will be pulled into something called as a plastic zone. If you have read White in Punjabi, you must read it if you haven't got a chance. It describes how a joint is in a neutral zone, free to move from right to left and right to left to right. But once it is struck, the moment becomes hindered. And this is where a dysfunction would be born. And I tell you, this dysfunction is even more distressing than this little funny animation. So if you are in neutral zone, your joints and you are protected. But if you're not, then this is what is going to happen of your joints. Your discs are going to move out of the position. There's going to be a wear and tear osteoarthritis, spondylosis, all is going to born out of this thing. Now, that makes me give you two choices. One choice is to get rid of the symptoms of the patient and make them temporarily better. Or to take on the challenge. I tell you, that's not going to be easy. I told you I'm digging in last eight years and it's been hell of learning, but then it's making a big difference in my practice. So the choices are one to just get rid of the symptoms or the second thing would be to take the challenge on its head and not only get rid of the symptoms, but make the patient become capable of doing things. So it's your choices whether you want to stick with the traditional methods, which were good, but only temporary, or you want to really make big changes in the lives of the patients. Now, why did we choose sacroiliac joint and why we are going to talk about sacroiliac joint today? Because that's the base, the foundation. So if your space is correct, your spine is correct. Mind it. You may have a neck pain, but it may come from your pelvis. So that is very important. If you start fixing the problem, it must start from your base, not from the top. Now. To understand the mechanics, I've made two animations here. We've been all saying that it hurts between the sacrum and the ilium as a sacroiliac problem. This is a twin problem. You can have an ilium lacking movement of the sacrum as shown in the one image, or it can be a lack of sacrum moving on the ilium. Now, while they are, they are different, yes, they are different because they don't have different axes of movement. When the sacrum moves on ilium, it moves at the S2 level. And when the ilium moves at the sacrum, it moves at the S3 level. And if you have by chance sacrum in front of you, you would see there's a lot of mountains and pits in it. So there are different planes in which the sacral leg joint moves and there is an L-shaped articular surface. This is to 
have different kinds of functions and different mechanics, not just one. And that we need to understand before we go for any kind of advocacy, whether it's the stealth exercises or we go for more aggressive treatments. For instance, I have put across on my screen three different kinds of exercises. One is an ilium going posterior and anterior. That is on the bottom left of the image. The second is it is going up and down that is called as up slip or down slip. And what, in, what is not moving, but the picture depicts in itself is an out flare or an in flare where the ilium rotates outwards or inwards. So that was ilium. Sacrum also behaves in many different ways. There are virtually seven different axes, as you can see, on which the sacrum can go into this function. It can rotate in various directions and get struck if biomechanical in fault. So it can rotate to the, this way, this way. It can go on a diagonal axis and rotate. It can go anterior, posterior. So there are different types of problems which we can encounter while the sacrum goes into different kinds of problems. I think Dr. Nitesh is raising his hand. Uh, Manish, I, since we all are physiotherapists, can you explain us also, how do we identify each one of these dysfunctions? It will help us to understand and you make a, make a good clinical decision if you can help us with that as well. Sure, uh, Dr. Nitesh, we are a little lacking in time, but I like definitely like to show you one or two important things in this. Uh, though we can do more uh, with our physical tests, like we have... Uh, a motion palpation test where we find this restriction in the motion, or we can do a leg length testing, a functional leg length testing, which is, of course, a chiro thing, not a physio thing, but then you can obviously learn and do that. But the most important and the more realistic thing in which even we can show to our medical counterparts who don't believe on those things, it would be an x-ray. And fortunately, we physios could master that techniques, which even most of the medical doctors are not aware of. I'll show you this little example here on the screen. Uh, when, while I was talking, I got the time to fix the slide. Now in this slide, I'm trying to show the pelvic outflare and the inflare, which I was talking about where the, uh, sorry, the ilium goes into internal or external flaring. So I'm trying to draw certain things very quickly because it's lacking time. So I'm just trying to show this drawing things. So I've marked certain things on certain bony landmarks. And with this, I can find out that my ilium on one side has flared out. You can see an out flare with this image. If you see here, the pubic bone has shifted to the left as compared to the central line, which is marked here yellow. And uh, even the size of the ilium, which you'll view in the two-dimensional picture, uh, it's bigger on the side of the outflare as compared to the other side. I've drawn, taken equal length yellow lines, and you can see the yellow line is going out on the other side as compared to this side. So we have these various options, which if any time later on I have more to share with you, I'll definitely do that. Thank you, Dr. Nitesh, for answering this question. We'll continue further on these things. Now, if you have this fixation, it cannot go back on its own. It needs to be taken care by a manual therapist. Dr. Deepak is going to teach you wonderful techniques how to fix this posterior and anterior rotations of ilium. Very shortly, he'll be live, and he's a wonderful teacher in that respect. Otherwise, you have many options. You can use mobilizations. You can use an adjuster as shown on the left-hand corner of your screen. Uh, or you could use an, a muscle energy technique, which is also helpful in some patients. Or you could use something which I'm trying to show you on the screen, which is a drop table. So here the ilium had gone posterior and I manipulated it back. I could have used a traditional manipulation, but I thought this will be something new for some physios in India. So I intentionally chose a picture of a drop table, which makes my job very simple and quick. I need to do three repetitions and put the bone back into position. But that's how we can fix it. So if somebody has this kind of a problem, an in flare, out flare, a sacral rotation, he needs to go to a chiropractor physiotherapist or a 
manual osteopath who can fix that. But now today we are locked in and we want ourselves to stay healthy and we want to send some techniques to our patients. So that should be best done if we do some self-exercises. And these self-exercises, mind you, have two limitations. If you have got an acute problem, they may not probably work. They may minimize the problem, but they are very important in two regards. And that's why I've picked up the teaching here. One, to prevent it. If you have a decayed teeth, you need a dentist to get rid of it. But to prevent that teeth from getting decayed, you need to brush that. So if you feel your teeth are important and you need to give five minutes of that brushing every day in your daily life, I think your sacroiliac joint, which is the biggest connection between your upper half of the body and the lower half of the body, needs also five minutes. I'm going to teach you some exercise in five minutes. Depending upon what dysfunction we want to correct, but the best thing about these exercises is you need not to have a pre-exercise when the preventive role comes into play. Because what we are trying to do is to restore the elasticity of those elements which could bring these dysfunctions. So if you're correcting either way, this way or that way, you're only trying to get rid of the tighter dysfunctions while ensuring the other one doesn't grow into fault. So that's a great wonder. I just recently learned from my Europe too these techniques. And I tell you, I used to get a lot of problems with my spine, especially when you doing your osteopathic techniques have to bend a lot. But that's a three-year-old, four-year-old story, which is now become a history. I no longer require any treatments because I do this self-exercises for my entire body. And it's been last three, four years that I've ever required any passive kind of therapy. So this is the lovely thing. All you need to spend five, seven minutes, do it slowly, very gently in the beginning. And it's not about the power or the force. It's about just putting the thread in the right point in the needle to job, get your job done. So do it slowly. That's the first recommendation before I teach you. And not only they are preventive, but they are also a magic mantra for the problems not to come back in the patients when you have treated them. So let's learn these self-mobilization techniques of the sacroiliac joint. But a little thing, a note about the body tissue before I start with this. There are three kinds of tissues when we have one in your frame. You could see a hard subject, which is, was very difficult to move. This is a very soft subject. And then the third one was soft, yet it has the strength to maintain itself erect. If you see the first, you saw the first one, it was very strong, but not flexible. The second one was very flexible, but couldn't stand erect. The third one is flexible and strong. That is what we need in our human tissue. We don't need great strength. We don't need great flexibility. All we need is a balance between the two. And I call it as elasticity, not flexibility, not strength. If you have good elasticity, you're bound to stay healthy. Now, you need to get that thing by getting a combination of two and balancing the myofascial elements. The first thing I will talk about is the counter nutrated sacrum. People may have flat backs. People even may not have properly flat backs, still their joint may be struck. So we need to get that freedom of movement, that ease of movement back restored. So that we can do by doing these exercises. One is pelvic tilt. This is the wrong way of doing it. Let me go to the right way. See how much movement he's trying to produce. He may do a good pelvic tilt, but he's overacting his erector spinae, which may get into a different kind of back pain later. We need to activate the small core muscles, the multifibrous. And this is in this video, you could see what we need to do is move our ilium in a spine like position where our hips and knee flexed very gently into anterior lateral direction. That is, Imagine you have got two lights attached on the ischium, which are trying to take it down very gently. If you see the last thing in the image, I try to overuse 
my editor's funny and I was getting a big moment. No, it's a very gentle moment and it should be initiated from your ischial tuberosity, not from your spine. If you initiate from your spine, you're going to have an erectus spinal dysfunction. So it has to be a very, very gentle recruitment. You can do the opposite of that. I'm just showing it the correct way again. Trying to push it down. Feel my hand on the transverse abdominals. It should be concurrently recruited. And once I've done the right way, I will ensure only a little movement, not a big movement that you can see now. So opposite to that would be a mutation where I have a huge ladosis or I have difficulty in extending back. I'm going to do the just the reverse, pull my ischial tuberosities up and medially. Second could be a rotated sacrum, anteriorly rotated sacrum. Remember when we were walking, the sacrum was rotating up and down, it may get struck and you get a pain in the gluteal area. The patient says, I got a, getting a pain in my glutes. So for this, again, I'm showing you a video, how we can do that. All we need to do is to lie in prone. The involved leg is on top and I'm facing the side of the involved leg and then trying to pull my sacrum towards the roof using my ASIS being lifted from the ground. I'm, it's not doing a huge rotation at my spine. So if you correct this, you're not only correcting the sacral rotation, but also you're going to correct this rotation of the spine, which is immediately above the sacrum. So that's the second thing. You should do both the sides if you're not sure which side the function it is to make that healthy and pliable. Then the posterior internal rotated ilium. Deepak sir is going to talk a lot about that as tools. So if it is fixed in one direction, I need to reverse it. Again, you may not be knowing which direction it is fixed. So you can do this exercise, which fixes both side faults. So what I do, I just recruit my sacrum in the same way as I did. And then when I have done that, I'm going to try to move one leg down towards the floor and one leg up towards the roof. It's a very gentle movement. You could see in the top, my bones were moving up and down, very little, even more subtle than I tried to show in the last one to just to make you feel what I was doing. So remember, if I have a posterior ilium on one side, it will make my leg become shorter functionally. If I have anterior ilium on one side, it will make my leg longer on this side. So I'm trying to balance. I'm not correcting this fault, but I'm making my myofascial elements, elements stay healthy so that they function normally and I'm not get, going to get these kind of problems. The, you can see it again very quickly. Just one more minute and I'll teach you the last two things. Then another common problem of upslip and downslip, people who are habitually jumping on one leg or have fallen from a height, they may have an upslip. So if it is bound by tight quadratus lumbrum, you may have an upslip, which is myofascial. So as your rotated sacrum could have been because of tight piriformis. So if you have an upslip, then you need to do this exercise, recruit your internal coal of multifeeders as we did in the first exercise by shifting your ischial debrosities down and out, and then slide your hip bones straight down and straight back. Don't move them up and down as we did in the exterior and interior nominate, but we're sliding them straight forward and backward. So this is how we correct that. And the last one, which I want to put it, where I showed you even a radiographic analysis of doing was the outflare and inflare. So this outflare and inflare can be corrected by moving our hip joints, which are very close to move the ilium. So if you could see in this image, I'm trying to take my legs on one side, without letting my ASIS rise, because if I let my ASIS rise from the ground, I am going to rotate my spine and not get the correction on the inflare and outflare. And if you could see my knees are together, but not my feet. If time would have permitted, I would have told you why to keep only the knees together, but not the feet together. But it is very important that you dissociate them. Take it in one direction, take it in another direction, and you're trying to negate that little tightness which is growing and going to take your pelvis to one side into inflare and outflare. So that was what I wanted to say. These techniques 
are not like a magic which would create the dysfunction, but only last for a few seconds. Like the magic show is over, everything gets over. But these techniques are which going to put a permanent betterment of your system. I felt on your body, and I'm sure if you practice that, you're going to feel that magic in you. So it's just like any other health system which is imparting like a coronavirus. What you need to do to prevent this problem from occurring, you have to do social distancing. So these are the social distancing means of making your secretary leg joint stay healthy. But if you, somebody has a coronavirus, this may not be very relevant because you will need a medical professional or a manual therapist to get that thing better. That's what I wanted to say. Thank you. You can ask the queries right now. Or if you get any after thoughts, I put my WhatsApp number on the bottom of the screen. Or Nitesh ji was kind enough to put my email ID on that. Thank you. It was wonderful to have you all there. Thank you, Dr. Nitesh. Thank you so much, Dr. Majesh. It was indeed wonderful and it was treat to NI. Can I request you if you can stop your uh, video so that we can come together? I am already flooded with a lot of questions, Dr. Manish. That's actually a good sign where we know there is a lot of interaction, a lot of thought process happening between the audience and among themselves and bit to their mind. There was a first question which somebody asked me on an email. And I thought I must take, because this guy must have been ready for this webinar long ago. How do we diagnose malfunctioning of sacrum and how do we correct it? I don't know, you would like to take it complete as of now or you want to keep it for the last? Uh, yeah, uh, we can do a simple motion testing. In a motion testing, we keep a hand on the bone, which we want to test, and we do a series of activities in which the joint is supposed to move. So if that is moving very nicely, we believe that nothing is wrong in that particular area. We need to find some other faults because a single problem can come from multiple problems. So we try and test different things. Like if you have a fever, uh, you want to test it, whether it's coming from a malarial parasite or a bacteria, so you do a blood test. So similarly, if you have a problem and you find it initially, you need to do a series of physical or radiological tests. So that is how we do that. Another question what I see on my screen right now is, does upslip, downslip exist, or it's just the tightness of myofascial structure? Absolutely, there are two ways uh, we can get that thing. One is uh, with the trauma when you fall, and this is a very subtle form of a dislocation, which actually does not disrupt the ligaments, but we get a little misalignment. That is with trauma. But if you have a tight quadratus lumbarum, it's going to keep on pulling one side. And this is what I call as myofascial upslip. One of our viewers asked, how can we differentiate whether it's problem from ileum or sacrum? How do we distinguish between those? Uh, again, uh, uh, if I would have had time, I would have gone for all the details of testing that thing. It's very difficult to sum it up in uh, this 25, 30 minutes. So we have a lot of tests. We have uh, a leg lint test, functional leg test. Not only with ileum and sacrum, I can test any bone in the body, whether it's aligned or misaligned. Then I have... Uh, a sim another method where I do a very quick muscle testing to find out, okay, this muscle is tight or this muscle is weak. But then we need time and uh, more things into that. I think we have other, other panelists already with us now. Dr. Deepak, can you hear us? Uh, yes, Dr. Nitesh. Uh, hi, very good evening, everyone. How are you doing? Let me, I'm let sure me, you people are staying inside your home. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Deepak. Let me now take for us, you know, kind of make it exciting. What is your comment on Dr. Manish Arora's presentation right now? How do you see that? It's a, it's a lovely presentation. Undoubtedly, he is a great speaker. And at present, I feel so happy. He has made my work so easy. And uh, I will concentrate mainly now on uh, delivering the treatment and the therapy. So it's a lovely presentation. And he's a very good friend of mine. So uh, all five stars to him. And well, so much uh, knowledgeable, so much uh, insight about the sacrilege joint. And I'm sure the audience must have been benefited from his presentation like anything. Well, believe and that I have conducted and moderated a number of sessions, but never felt so nervous having both of you. I don't know what I'm going to speak in both of you, though I have nothing to share with our audience. But you know, having you know, I'm I'm equally nervous. There was a there was a patient going inside the OT, and he said, "Doctor, I'm I'm very nervous. It's my first surgery." And doctor said, "Yes, I'm equally nervous." He said, "Why you are nervous?" He said, it's my also for surgery. <laughs> Thank you. Let, me share, let me share. I wasn't that nervous. Uh, I wasn't that nervous because I had a senior doctor behind me, Dr. Deepak Kumar. So I was a little bit more uh, calm and composed that if something goes wrong, he's behind me. 
I think future generalization now. So let's move on to our business today. And thank you, Dr. Manish. We will come back to you once we are done with Dr. Deepak's session. So thank you so much for this wonderful discussion what we had so far. Now, thank uh, you, Dr. Nadesh. Thank you, Dr. Nadesh. Thank you, Dr. Deepak Kumar. I think again a name who doesn't need any introduction. He has trained uh, more than he has treated more than one lakh patients already. Conducted more than two hundred and twenty-five workshops, not only in India but outside abroad. A very well-recognized name in terms of manual therapy, working in the field of physiotherapy for more than twenty-six years now. So over to you, Dr. Deepak Kumar, on this topic. Thank you very much, Dr. Nitesh Bansal, and thank you to Society of Indian Physiotherapists. Uh, a lovely job this society doing for upliftment of physiotherapy profession and for. like it's a lovely work in last 5 years the society of indian physiotherapists have done and i feel very proud to be associated with the sip and it's a great opportunity thank you for giving this opportunity to share my insight about the sacro leg joint and once again thank you dr manish aroda for uh, giving so much detail about the sacro leg joint in such a short span of time that makes my work really very easy i need not repeat all those things so i'll directly jump into the treatment part self treatment because this webinar is on how to do the self treatment or the self mobilization of the sacro leg joint so just before i go for the treatment i'll just take not more than 1 minute time to show you the spine model and i have luckily during corona breakdown period luckily i have this model with me so that's the sacro leg joint and dr manish has already discussed it could be it could have been shifted and little anteriorly or little posteriorly little upward or downward or maybe rotated forward or backward it could also be possible that sacrum has gone forward or backward and if you see from physics point of view you just need to examine the patient and lot lot of tests are there on uh, in the books in the orthopedics books in the physiotherapy books on youtube or your teacher must have taught beautifully through that you can make out what is wrong but i'll now i today i'll give you the one shortcut majority of the time i believe i have seen in my last 28 years of experience majority of the time it has gone anterior and lateral and all you need to do is pull it posterior medially 90% cases in my practice posterior medial glide works beautifully and remaining 10% you have to do anterior lateral up slip down slip anterior tilt posterior tilt nutation counter nutation yes there are new terminology coming up people don't believe in up slip and down slip it's a different terminology you want to use that is your choice uh, we still believe we still use those terminology and i'm more than happy about it so here what we are going to do is i'm going to stabilize the sacrum and give this glide so this become the posterior medial glide okay i'll stabilize the sacrum here and then give the posterior medial glide i'll not keep my hand there i'll keep my hand there so it is the posterior medial glide or anterior lateral glide i can tilt it this way or that way okay or push it down or take it up how to take it up by pushing it down fine or new for nutrition counter nutrition either we have to give pressure there or here but here because in this webinar it's all about doing the self treatment so we will be teaching you how to do self treatment on patient how to teach self treatment and yesterday me and dr manish and natesh was discussing now during this breakdown this uh, corona lockdown period even the physios are having or not even uh, in this lockdown otherwise also lot of physios have sacroiliac pain and clinically speaking it is so easy to diagnose of course this answer you should not be giving in your uh, practical exam you will not be able to pass for next year next 10 years for sure if you give this answer but being a clinician i'm giving you one very clear hint you have to palpate those dimples okay and in my experience if it is the dimple only the dimple giving pain fine it's bound to be sacroiliitis for sure you can take my words keep doing all those tests that's fine but if patient is complaining pain in that dimple it is going to be sacroiliitis just in one second you can make out okay literature says sacroiliitis is very very less common it is the l5 l4 okay that's fine that's what the literature says my own experience says prevalence of sacroiliitis is as much as you have the lower back pain as much as same it's same for 
L4, 5, and second unit idea. So without putting further more time, because I have I also have. 25 minutes, I'll directly jump into the treatment part of it. As I said, we'll be doing posterior medial glide. So I'll be showing you one hand has to come on the sacrum and another has to go on the anterior part of the ASIS. And with this hand, I'm going to pull it in this direction. And when you do this direction, just keep doing oscillations. Okay. Now I'm not talking about mobilization with movement because last to last year, we did a study on real time ultrasound me and dr bhini was there in new york along with dr mohini rawat we did a uh, real time ultrasonic study on various joints and we noticed if the person is doing active movement the glide was lost because the muscle play compressive forces on the joint surfaces so we have stopped doing active movement followed by passive operation now either we do the passive movement or we do the passive or we do the oscillatory movements okay at the same time, in this also you will notice, we will not be treating our patient in weight bearing. Because in weight bearing also we notice, once you go in weight bearing, the sacrum or any joint get logged, it is not possible to mobilize it. There were, we have collected those evidences through the help of your real time ultrasonic. So all the techniques I'm going to show you, passive one, patient will not be using the muscles around that joint. At least we try, we teach patient in such a way. Second thing, it's going to be non-weight bearing or a little bit of weight bearing only, partial weight bearing. Third thing, Manish already said, remember pain is your friend, not your enemy. It tells you there is something wrong with the body. It has to be acknowledged. So when you do this, make sure no pain produce. It has to be pain relieving, not pain producing. Slight stress or strain is fine, but it should relieve the pain during and after. It should not be painful. I recommend to do these exercises just twice a day and every time you do five to 10 times. Before doing these exercises, you can go for hot pack or cold pack and no pain should be felt. Do it gently, slowly, or you can take the help of someone. So first of all, I'll go for the posterior medial glide for the sacroiliac joint. And for if the patient is complaining pain in flexion, I'll put the patient in all four position, in quadruped position. Please come in all four position here. Keep both knees a little apart. And then you can put a towel under the affected knee. Under affected knee, I have put a towel. So this will push the ilium bone backward, posterior medially. And keep, ask the person to keep the hands a little away. And then you ask person to push from the hands, okay? She's not going to use the back muscles or the hip muscles. She need to push it so that these muscles are relaxed. Okay, go down slowly. And that glide is maintained. And now come back using the arm muscles only. So maybe I can take her on the edge of the plinth so she can pull herself using the arm muscles. Same way, once again, go down and then come back. You can increase or decrease the intensity of the glide by taking other leg little forward or backward okay little forward this time she has gone and look at the glide now it's much stronger and come back i'm not doing patient is going to do by herself okay yep fine now the same way, if you want to do anterior lateral, though the percentage is much less, if you want to do anterior lateral, what I'm going to do simply, take the towel out from this knee and put it under the opposite one. It's all about the relative movement, okay? It's all about the relative movement. There was a question asked by um, uh, some of the participants from Dr. Manish Aroda, how do you check whether it's a sacrum or the ilium? I say, does it really make difference? Actually, you are treating the sacroiliac joint. It's all about relative movement. Either you move sacrum or you move ilium, you are mobilizing the sacroiliac joint. It's all about relative movement we are talking. Okay, so this time it is a posterior medial on this side. So relatively, this is an anterior lateral on this side and patient can do the same. Okay, but imagine if it is not the flexion which is 
bothering patient if it is extension which is bothering patient now i'll ask my patient to lie down okay and simply put the towel it should be a bathing towel not the hand towel or the small towel bathing towel good thickness should be there and then put it under the one side of the asis only it is again under the one side so this is a posterior medial if you want to do anterior lateral put it on the opposite side and now i'll ask her to use the arm muscles make sure patient don't use back muscle if patient is contracting back muscle jam, joint will get jammed and it won't open there a lot of literature a lot of evidence is already there in the biomechanics books you can go through that okay so come up using your arm muscles only and go down come up okay and go down now how to remember this the last technique you can remember it like a lion's technique because this is how the lion sit in the forest okay and this technique i call it anaconda technique okay the anaconda is lying on the table and then anaconda comes up and blow out sudden air hiss so you get the passive pressure also so that was a lion technique and this is the anaconda technique remember that now next one is up slip and down slip and i call that technique as alu bukhara technique plum you know plum alu bukhara technique please come and sit down here and in short while you will come to know why i am calling it alu bukhara technique okay i am sure you will be able to get it so half of the alu bukhara resting on the table and half of the alu bukhara is off the table so i call it alu bukhara technique now patient is sitting comfortably on the chair or sorry not on the chair on the table any table you, in home patient can use study table okay so half of the hip joint is resting this is the joint you are treating now because this is the up slip and you want it to be the down one and this leg should be just only resting only the toe should be touching the floor okay if it is hanging in the air the obviously the quadratus lumborum will work and it will pull it up it won't allow it to go down so i am asking her to just touch it there and because of the body weight itself it will go down otherwise at home patient can ask some of the relative to put the hand like that on the ilium top of the ilium and gently maintain that okay or do the small oscillation now if this is already down what do you do obviously then you go and sit on the other side of the table and this alu bukhara rest on the table this alu bukhara goes down half of the alu bukhara on the table half of the alu bukhara goes down okay so you can treat the same technique same way for up slip and down slip like we use the same position for the uh, posterior medial and anterior lateral for flexion and for extension now next technique is how to treat the rotation at home by yourself in a most simpler form without using very heavy gadgets okay please lie down on your tummy so i'm going to use these two books as blocks i don't have blocks here at my home so i'm going to use these two great books in the history okay one is greaves modern manual therapy and one is the gray's anatomy both from the g okay so one i'm going to put under the thigh of the patient okay a little bit more up and there and this book another big book thick book you can use any block okay i am going to use other side and this side it is going to cover this side of the ilium psis this is going to cover not the psis but up to the thigh so what i'm going to do now imagine this ilium has come forward it's easy to imagine now dr manisha arora has done beautiful presentation it's much more easier for you to imagine so imagine this has come forward so i need to push it back so i'm going to stabilize it here one hand on the asis and just simply oscillate probably the relative can help or if there is no relative just lie down like this for some time our ligament get stretch there is a creep okay so you can lie down for 10 15 minutes this will help for sure now what about treating the nutation and counter nutation of the sacrum same way in this also if it is already back and you want to take it forward you replace the book this gray's anatomy comes on this side 
and grieves modern manual therapy goes on that side okay lovely books they are the history now unfortunately <clears throat> those people are not there with us okay uh, deepak sir can i just uh, say some i think there is some problem with the voice deepak sir can you hear me now uh there was there is a problem i uh, if you can just adjust a little bit with your microphone are you using our earbuds yes i am using earbuds uh, so are you able to hear me now no i can i can hear you but i'm getting some messages from viewers i think there was some disturbance in between regarding your voice i hope it's getting cleared but if it if you are able to hear probably they should be able to hear let's hope that sir please sir yeah. thank you thank you very much dear so you can use any block like that probably i need to speak slowly i you know when i get excited i speak so fast so i need to speak slowly so you can take anything anything any block will do fine luckily i have a belt here so what i'm going to use i'm going to put it under the sacrum and depending where i am putting my belt okay so if it is a counter nutated one now the sacrum has gone there so i'll put the belt on the lower part of the sacrum if the sacrum is already oh, sorry counter nutated then i put the belt at the s1 if it is nutated i'll put it at s3 s4 so because of this pressure and then patient simply lie down nothing else to be done so i'll put this belt i'll ask her to turn around find the sacrum there and then put the belt and simply ask her to lie down now again there might some maybe you have some question how do you know whether it is working if it is working it is going to be pain free and if worse reverse so simple easy if worse reverse first you are going to change the angle direction pressure force side not helping reverse it so simple so what you are going to do first thing is posterior medial glide putting the tower under the same knee joint or same asi depending whether you want to do for the flexion or you want to go for extension okay if you want to make it more aggressive just take the opposite knee little forward or backward fine and if you want to go for extension put it under the asi is make the patient lie down ask her to push it using the arm muscle every time we are asking patient to do it passively passively does not mean someone has to do it passively it is also suggested now if if i am moving my wrist joint okay with the other hand is it not passive movement will you call it active no this is passive right now this is active so if patient is using other body part not the muscles around that joint that's a passive movement. treat it in non weight bearing passively so that glide is sustained okay so posterior medial glide anterior lateral glide in extension posterior medial or anterior lateral then remember the lion anaconda alu bukhara technique whether you take this side or that side try it and then you put the wooden block or the hard form or the book book everyone has book at their home right so put the book and if it is hurting wrap the towel around it put it on the one side and then the other side half only on one side half one side half and then if one book is here one book is here obviously you want to push it in this direction pure backward and if one book is here one book is here obviously you want to now push it there you will not push over the book you will push away from the book book is here you are pushing there book is here you are pushing there so you can correct the rotation also remember no pain should be felt has to be pain free so these are the five techniques i always practice and i always teach my patients and get beautiful results pa patient comes crying in the clinic and they go back smiling because you get the result then and there for sure okay so i think uh, if there is any question i probably i finished before time i finished in uh, dr nidesh once i'll probably keeping eye on the time i finished i think in 23 minutes i saved 2 minutes so if there is a few more questions i can I think let's save today it's an earning sir and i think what we uh, started i think probably one or two minutes later we have covered it now and thank you so much for such a uh, detailed practical explanation and i'm flooded with question right now so let me uh, take up uh, dr manish arora also with us now 
So we have almost 68 questions as of now coming up. So let me take up in the order. Dr. Manish, do you have to say something to Dr. Deepak as he mentioned about? Uh, yeah, um, it's always enriching to learn from him. I've been uh, doing for the last 30 years now. We started in 1990 learning from him. And uh, he's a wonderful... In fact, in fact Manish Arora, we were together in Nepal. We are colleagues, right? And I, I came to Korea together. <laughs> Your college there, Deepak, sir? Sorry? Did you rag them? I mean, I came to know today that you, <laughs> you, you would deny the secret. I, no, I can't I'll answer. It. I'll, I'll tell it. These are the secrets. These are secrets. Okay. Um, but one thing I'd uh, uh, just not to challenge, sir. He's my teacher. Or he's my senior. But sir, I have seen practical work. You put the carrot on top of the carrot. और छुरी रख के खरबूजा फेंको दोनों में डिफरेंट तरह का कट आता है इसमें थोड़ा सा मैं आपसे डिफर करूंगा कि सेक्रो इलेक और इलियो सेक्रल अलग अलग तरीके हमारे सोचने के हम दोनों सही हो सकते हैं बट ये थोड़ा सा डिफरेंस मैं आपसे जस्ट अपने व्यूज शेयर कर रहा हूं हो सकता है आप सही कह रहे हो बट मेरा ये थोड़ा सा था वी कैन एग्री टू डिसएग्री बिकॉज़ हमारी छुरी छोटी सी छुरी नहीं होती हम तो समुराई चलाते हैं तो तो हम कैसे भी फेंकते हैं कट्टा खजूर खरबूजा ही है we have such a great learning between these two lines that we have to agree to disagree and respect each other's opinion and move forward. I think that's again a great learning for all of us at this webinar. So let me take up the first question which came, sir, what is the best thing we can do in the case of sudden acute low back pain? Rest is not a many times acceptable to our patient. So uh, I think uh, Dr. Deepak, would you like to take it up? Practically speaking, when there is a sudden low back pain, you have to check actually whether it is a it is coming from the sacroiliac joint or from the spine. It means San Carlos. Yeah, hold it there. Thank you very much. So if it is a sudden one, I'll not directly jump into manual therapy or physiotherapy. Very first thing, I'll, I'm going to check what is the reason, what is the cause behind it. You have to find the cause behind it. That is the first thing. Until you find the cause behind it, I'm going to put patient on cryotherapy or the rest, not electrotherapy. I've experienced it. Moment you put interferential therapy in acute pain, it has always always increased. I've checked all the frequency, intensity, everything. It has always increased. So not even the electrotherapy or the ultrasonic, those things always increase in acute phase. So I'll go for the cryotherapy and the rest at that time and find the cause behind it. If it is a malalignment, if it is a positional fault, once you find it, okay, give a click, fix it then and there, pain goes. But maybe, you know, there, is, there could be something else. And you may click it and you may damage the tissue. You may damage the bone. So maybe there was a problem coming since long, okay? And we were ignoring, 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 and all of a sudden it has flared up. And you manipulate, you will be in a big suit. So I'll suggest find the cause first, even in acute phase. Sudden pain. Go for the I rest. Second, sir, what he said is absolutely right. Actually, uh -huh. this cryotherapy is the best mantra. And something which I learned from him only is the sin factor. If the severity, irritability in nature is very high, it is always better to avoid these techniques and find the cause. I think he said it all right. Absolutely wonderful. And uh, Dr. Marish, I think the next one is for you. Is there a dysfunction? If there is a dysfunction more than two X's of sacrum, how do we address that? Uh, we need to find out. Actually, we have to marry the vectors. Vectors are the directions in which we correct this thing. It is uh, not only two, there can be four. Like uh, tell you about the atlas, which is the main which holds our uh, head into position. Now it can go anterior, it can go superior, it can shift to the left and it can rotate to the right. So I have to find out me mechanically where it has gone. I'm going to marry the vectors and find the optimal direction and fix it back. And um, how do we assess in which direction has the ilium or sacrum have moved? Uh, uh, now being trained uh, more into chiropractic, I use the leg length and the applied canosology thing. Or the radiology thing, I have. Uh, 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 I do a lot of X-rays. It gives me two uh, twin comfort. One, I rule out a lot of problems which probably will not reflect without an X-ray, like somebody has a severe osteoporosis or something like that, which may be a hurdle in my treatment. And secondly, I find out these faults with an X-ray. Both of these things complete with my uh, complement with my physical finding, and this is how I find that. Uh, Dr. Deepak, there another interesting part where people ask us, how do you identify whether it's upslip on one side or downslip on the other side? How do we distinguish that? I think Dr. Manish Arora already answered that when a similar type of question was asked from uh, 
Dr. Manish Arora after his presentation. And there are so many tests, you know, and you have to check all those things. There are so many tests, but you know, sometime I I will tell you now the trick. Okay, so that's a answer for the classroom, but secret now. Secret, that's the reason okay? I came to you, sir, for this question. <laughs> secret now. Just do it. If worse, reverse. Chapter close. Just do it. If worse, reverse. Then and there, it has to be pain free. You're doing some glide, and that is producing more pain. Just do the reverse, and that opposite of this is the problem. You know, one one secret thing in physiotherapy. I don't know whether people have realized or not. On the lighter side, okay, on the lighter side, actually in physiotherapy we don't treat patient. We repeat our assessment in the name of treatment. For example, how do you check in coordination? You ask patient to touch my finger and my and your nose. And how you treat? If the patient is not able to do it, how you treat? Touch my finger and your nose. And if someone comes with the bias of weakness, how do you check? Bend your elbow. And if patient is not able to bend it, what is the treatment? Come on, come on, come on. Bend your elbow. Patient says he says I can't take my neck for, for in a straight direction. Okay. So what is your treatment? Hey, keep it straight. <laughs> Patient I says I can't. I can't walk I'm straight. Patient, so you say okay, walk straight. Same way. So in physiotherapy, your assessment is your treatment. Right. In manual therapy, what I follow, your treatment is your assessment. Mm -hmm. Okay. In physiotherapy, your assessment is your treatment. In manual therapy, your treatment is your assessment. This is on the lighter note. Please don't answer this thing in your exam room. You will be failed. And sir, now moving quite fast because I think we already bombarded with more than seventy questions now. Can we use these kind of exercise with patient who have arthritis? Yes, it will help. Remember, you have to do gently and slowly, and again, pain, let pain be your guide. And with the and can... and remember and remember one more thing. Remember, if it is not contraindicated, it is indicated. It is worth trying. In my yesterday webinar, I showed two cases: black swans of practice. We call it. Rarely you get black swans, okay? But even they responded beautifully. They were the, probably the red flag, but they responded beautifully. But remember, if it is not contraindicated, it is contra. Uh, if it is not contraindicated, it is indicated. You must give a try. It should be pain free. Okay, so moving on to the next one. If the patient have both PIVD and SI dysfunction. How to diagnose and which treatment should we start first? Now, PIVD, sorry, sir. sorry, Dr. Manish Arora, please go ahead. So uh, now my clinical knowledge, I may have a little in that, but is to start at the base first because if your sacrum is rotated to one side, automatically your lumbar spine is going to rotate to the other side, and it is going to be a cascade of problems going upwards. So it is. Majority of the problems, if you find today, in the lumbar spine, Deepak sir was absolutely pinpointly correct when he said people are over-emphasizing on the back problems. He in his yesterday seminar was very emphatic in saying that we see the MRI and we get blown. Oh, I have a disc prolapse. Mm -hmm. Something major has blown out of my body. It's nothing like that. So if you treat this mechanical dysfunctions in a logical way, you start with the base and go up. Your back pain also will become better. So it are all it is all interlinked. But my logic says start from the base. If you're not very clear about finding the dysfunctions, there's a different theory behind it, but you need to be very competent in finding that thing. But if you're not, then start with the base and go ahead. Great. Uh, so another one. Uh, Nitesh, one more, one line I would like to add here. Moment the physio see disc bulge in MRI report or MRI film, you know, the one dialogue comes very straight. Let me repeat it in Hindi. ये डिस्क डिस्क है डिस्क डिस्क या फिर ये डिस्क नहीं आसान दर्द का दरिया है और शॉर्ट वेव लगवाना है दिस इज व्हाट इज प्रैक्टिस अनफॉर्चूनेटली गोइंग ऑन दे नीड टू रिकॉग्नाइज व्हेयर इज द प्रॉब्लम एंड दे हैव टू फिक्स इट एंड इफ द प्रॉब्लम इज देयर इन बोथ द प्लेसेस यू हैव टू फिक्स इट बोथ व्हाई पेशेंट डजंट कम ओके मेरे को पीआईवीडी है पेशेंट कम्स मेरे को पेन है यू हैव टू हेल्प मी सो इट कुड बी एनीथिंग एंड यू हैव टू फिक्स इट वेरी सिंपल सो कैन स्ट्रेचिंग ऑफ सर्टेन टाइट मसल हेल्प इन करेक्शन ऑफ दिस एसआई जॉइंट डिसफंक्शन Yes, mm. but that, that's a double-sided sword. Uh, if joint has been hit from its own place, like if it's posterior and it's tight and it's tight, my hamstring is tight. Uh, you can imagine, okay, I have a skeleton. Thank you for being there, my little jack. Uh, if my ilium, I don't know how much you can see it, if I think this is how it moves, 
इफ दिस इज गोइंग पोस्टीरियर जैसे दीपक सर ने भी बताया अगर ये पोस्टीरियर जा रहा है तो ये हेमस्टिंग की टाइटनेस से जाएगा लेकिन जो मैं मैन्यूवर हेमस्टिंग की स्ट्रेचिंग का नॉर्मली यूज करूंगा स्ट्रेट लेग रेजिंग अगर आप उसको करके देखेंगे तो मेरा इलियम और पीछे जाएगा तो स्ट्रेचिंग एक बहुत अच्छी एक्सरसाइज है जहां पे हमारी कोर स्ट्रेंथ अच्छी है और हमें बहुत जबरदस्त डिस्फंक्शन नहीं आया लेकिन एक्यूट केस में वो मसल जो उसको खींच के नीचे लेके जा रही है जब उसको स्ट्रेच करेंगे तो वो और खींचेगी और वो डिस्फंक्शन को बढ़ा देगी तो इसमें आपको एक्चुअली अपना क्लिनिकल एक्यूमेंट यूज करना है कि कहाँ पे आपको स्ट्रेच करना है कहाँ पे आपको रिलीज करना है या मुलिगन दे के पहले उसको रियलाइन करना है और उसके बाद बाद में जब पेशेंट ठीक हो जाए यू कैन डू द स्ट्रेचिंग and so there are a lot of questions on whether this exercise or mobilization technique we can use in pregnancy pregnant women can we do that some of them yes but then uh, every exercise needs to be weighed against the uh, trouble you are going to create on the system some of them i don't know about what deepak sir taught maybe uh, better be used certain exercises but like one or two exercises which i was showing in prone lying there's no research whether it will harm or do good so at this point i'll be too naive to answer that thing Sir, Deepak, sir, any views on that? I, I, I think you know whenever I we teach manual therapy, we put uh, uh, pregnancy, especially the third trimester, mm-hmm. and after the delivery, lactating mother as yellow flags because the release of the of the uh, relaxing hormone joints are lax, and you have to be extra extra careful. Uh, so in the third trimester of pregnancy, and even after delivery, first. Uh, uh, Three months after after the delivery, lactating mother, we have to be extra extra careful before mobilizing the sacral leg joint. First two trimester, yes, you may try, but uh, third one and lactating mother, I won't try. I'll be extra careful. If I'm learning manual therapy now, I'll be extra careful. Once you are master, you can deliver manual therapy even while mother delivering the baby. You know, so it all depends. What is your skill level? So on similar domain, how do we handle patients with osteoporosis who present with SI joint dysfunction? Dr. Manish, can we listen? Yeah, sure. I think uh, most of the techniques, if we see, uh, which really make a big difference, is are very subtle techniques, provided we do don't go for the big manipulations, which can be distress not only distressful but can be devastating in getting the results. But otherwise, uh, majority of the techniques which Uh, we could do with muscle energy technique or uh, all these exercises they don't do any harm because we are making the joints move in the uh, proper planes of movement we are not trying to do a counter force so uh, that's the thing it's very safe unless the patient has been on uh, osteoporosis corticosteroids in every condition which would be really troublesome i think it's all workable So, sir, I think we are come to a end of session. That's the bad part of everything. Good, what we start. We also have our president, Dr. Raju Parashar, with us. Uh, thanks, uh, uh, Nitesh, for yeah. having me. And uh, I guess it was such an exciting session that I think participants would have liked that uh, we continue on. But anyway, let me say a few words. Uh, given that this is our first. Uh, first of our webinar series so participants i hope that you enjoyed this today's webinar as much as i have and as manish and deepak both said that you know given uh, this lockdown we have all suffering from the sedentary si joint and i'm sure that these techniques are going to help us they're going to help us i definitely am going to be trying them out very soon and if it don't doesn't work i know your telephone numbers and i shall contact you all um uh, uh, participants this is also a the first in our webinar series that we have uh, launched today and the launch has been excellent the response has been excellent and hoping that this will continue on and as far as this expert duo is concerned i have already warned them that they are going to be coming back for another session and another session and another session so i hope that you will uh, be excited or looking forward to uh, this finally i would also like to thank our moderator uh, dr bansal here and uh, he's also our tech expert <laughs> if he had not been here I don't think that we would have been able to launch this series, and so thank you so much, Dr. Bansal. Finally, uh, 
our esteemed speakers, uh, Dr. Uh, Professor Kumar and Professor uh, Arora, an excellent de demonstration of self mobilization techniques. And thank you all very much. Thanks, Nitesh. Uh, before you close, I would like to set one reminder for all the uh, attendees that next Saturday, on behalf of SIP, Society of Indian Physiotherapists, uh, I'm again coming on web for webinar along with Dr. Anil Bhave all the way from America. And we'll be doing it on the knee joint on the platform of, uh, so, uh, on the behalf of the Society of Indian Physiotherapists. And this time we are going to cover the knee joint. So I invite you all to attend that also. That will be on Saturday. We'll send you the information and all those things. Nitesh will also send you the information. So see you on Saturday also. Dr. Manish from your side, concluding remarks. Uh, so first of all, uh, Brajeshwar is here. I want to thank him personally. And uh, you especially, Dr. Nitesh, because I would have been able to do this webinar had you not taught me how to do a webinar. So that was wonderful. Deepak said, I always have been seeking his blessing. I'm his junior and he's been guiding me throughout. And, and thank you to the SIP team. Many people are behind this, which are not here among us, but they have been working constantly to get this thing on here. Thank you, everyone. It was wonderful to be here. And thank you, thank Nala, you. so much to all our viewers. Thank you, thank you, thank you Nitesh. Thank you, Eba. One second, one second before you close it. Thank you, Nitesh. Thank you, Raju, sir, and the entire team of SIP. And I also urge all the people, those who are watching us, it's a lovely society. I also invite you to join our association. They're doing a lot of academic work, a lot of uh, uh, selflessly entire team of Society of Indian Physiotherapists working towards the uh, uh, physiotherapy profession. So I also invite you to please join, be the member of this society. And uh, together we will change the future of physiotherapy in India for sure, inshallah. And Nitesh is such a lovely secretary of this association under the dynamic leadership of uh, Raju, sir. You can easily see, you know, uh, our, our commander of the Society of Indian Physiotherapists and so many other people not seen here, like Manish also said. Thank you so much. And Manish Arora, you are such a lovely friend of mine. And it was a wonderful presentation. I really loved every time I learned something from you. Thank you. Thank you for giving this opportunity. Thank you, one and all. Thank you so much for your feedback on our poll. So before we end, we would also like to share with you, we are coming up with a series of webinar. So we have another four webinar, as Deepak has already mentioned, lined up, which information you can get us on our Facebook page. So in case you want to know, so keep connected with us on our website, on our Facebook page, so that you get information about all our activities, what we do in future. Thank you so much. So before we sign up, I would like to thank you once again and invite you to our sixth annual conference, what we have scheduled in Chennai in January 2021. And hopefully everything will be settled by that time and we will be all able to meet physically. Thank you so much. Wish you all the best. Stay safe, stay home and stay active. Thank you. Thank you, each one of you.